Higher Education Students Loan and Grants Board recently launched an appeal asking former students of the University of Malaya who benefited from the government loans from 1985 to 2012 to begin repayment of these particular loans. Uh, the appeal has brought about quite a debate uh, with some asking questions like why now or how will the board be able to trace some of the students, former students of the University of Malawi. In Insight today, I have the Executive Director of the board, Mr. Chris Chisoni. Thank you so much for having time to talk to us. Thank you. So first of all, I just want you to view this video. Uh, it's a Skype interview I had with a former student yes. of the University of Malawi, but she's currently in Germany. Well, I'm happy. I think it's long overdue. I think it's, I'm glad that they are now setting up a system to collect the loans. And I would want this to work because I think it's very important. I think there are many Malawians out there who want to access higher education but cannot access it uh, because, I mean, there's, there's no way to find them. Right. So um, some people have been saying the way it's been presented in society is as if uh, the former University of Malawi students do not want to pay back their loans uh, to the university. Um, would you... You were one of the beneficiaries. How has this yes. been like? Did you have the desire to pay back this loan? Yes, I, I've had a desire to pay back this loan. And I think this is not the first time government has said that it wants to, to recover the loans. I remember they even had um, an office set up in the city center some time back. I went there, but there was nothing like happening at the place. So I've had a desire to pay back. And I know a lot of people, even if you see on, their, on Facebook, that there's a willingness to pay back, but there was no system. It was so difficult to pay back. It was very easy to get the loans, but there was no way you could pay back. Right. It was so, really I difficult. So yeah, so I hope this time they get it right. So you have, do you have the confidence now in this particular system now? Well, I, 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 I shouldn't say I have the confidence because I don't know exactly how it would work. I've seen the press release, I've read it, but I think they need to be much more transparent. They need to set up um, a real system that can reach out to everybody for instance, for example, like myself, I don't live in Malawi, so I want to be able to access the information right. and I re to access all information. And I think they should probably set up a website, maybe try to find ways to allow for online payments. There are many Malawians who studied at, in Chelsea College who now live outside the country. And I think uh, these people are willing to pay back, but I think they should make it accessible. For everyone. So there you have it. That's uh, Deborah Nyanguru Chipofsha in, in, in Germany there. Um, she raised a number of issues which I do hope that you'll touch on. But first of all, tell us more the main question. Why the appeal and why now? Okay, thank you very much, Teresa. We, the Higher Education Students Loans and Grass Board has just been put in place by an act of parliament in March 2015. So it's a new entity that is just existing less than a year. And that was the board being put in place by the Act of Parliament. And to establish the Secretariat, it has just been three months odd. As such, we, we are just fledging ourselves, establishing ourselves. We are at an inception phase to put the mandate that we have been given by the Act of Parliament in place so that we, we, we start dealing with the core functions. And before I answer your question is to say that we are there to disperse loans to need a uh, deserving students across the private and public universities in this country. We are also mandated to recover former loans that the former students had accessed from 1985-86 academic year. Um, it's not ending up in 2012, but we are limiting up to 2012, considering that the maturity phase of each loan is a period of five, six years. That's four years of a degree, and then after graduation, two years. So when you're talking of 2012, it's not like we will stop at 2012. It means next year we'll be saying up to 2013. Right. Yes, but we we are there mandated legally to 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 recover the resources that were used formerly by different schemes. You should know, government has used different versions of schemes through the universities, the public universities. Then at that time, there were only 
University of Malawi, Chancellor College, Polytechnic, Bunda, and KCN. Uh, then we have College of Medicine, we have Mzuni, we have now Rwana. Uh, all these, including the private universities, um, the students that are accessing higher education, accredited higher education, uh, studying accredited courses by National Council for Higher Education are the ones that are eligible to be granted loans if they are needed and they're found deserving. Mm -hmm. So part of it is, so our core function is twofold. Displacement of the loans and, and recovery, recovery of, the, the, of the loans. Right. Because in turn we are going to be a revolving fund that will revolve the very same monies that have been given to former students, who some of them today are in very senior positions, both in the government and in the private sector, that they should be able to repay and that we use the very same resources to support the needed students. Right. So um, you have termed this call as an appeal. Yes. Why not a demand? These are still former students who benefited. Yes. Um, and uh, there are records that someone did access some loan sometime. Yes. So why, why appeal? The word appeal is used to deal with the public consciousness uh, and to deal with uh, the spirit of citizenry uh, where there's patriotism in it as differenti differentiated from making a legal demand. We are going to arrive at a legal demand. We are moving in phases. Uh, the board, as I've said, has been put in place in 2015. As such, this, most of the schemes that have been running and the mandate that is taking us back in 1985, it means um, there they, they were different schemes and methodologies that were being used. However, what we're trying to say is, until now, there is no one whom we are going to call a defaulter because there are no systems and mechanisms. Of course, government at a certain particular point in time tried to establish a public university student loan trust that was built on this very same understanding like the way the board is now operating but there wasn't any legal framework to back up with operations as such it didn't last long so it couldn't carry it out its mandate effectively but now we are saying we have an act in place very very clearly defined act with penalties put in place for those that benefited from the loans and even those that have employed that those that benefit from the loans but have not disclosed and then we believe at this stage it is more important to make an appeal than to start threatening people with illegal jargons because right. in turn, knowing Malawians very well, a good number of them was too, we, we're going to enter into legal tassels that would derail the noble cause. Mm -hmm. I think we are appealing to the spirit of patriotism where every citizen who went through the public university in Malawi and benefited from those schemes, loan schemes, to realize that those were public resources. As such, the government still has the mandate. In a broader sense, the reform agenda of the current government is, is one principle that is guiding the operations of the board because it is a different way of looking at financing higher education in Malawi. Right. So um, you had Deborah there um, and of course um, the same spirit. You could see it um, on social media from former students saying, well, this is a good move. It's nice that now we can be able to repay these particular loans. But then... Many people say they have forgotten you know, some, some details, like uh, Deborah there, she, she was like, I don't even remember like, how much I owe them or, or my student number and all those, those little, little, little details. That's right. How do you help those students who are willing, former students who are willing, but then uh, information is not forthcoming? Those that have seen the press statements that we have released, we have radio adverts, very soon television adverts, uh, we've gone to have billboards, uh, should know that it's just a stepping stone, it's the foundation. We are building up a very robust system. We are going to have a website. We are going to have uh, different systems, IT systems, that will be able to relay information. And this information is connected to the universities, it's going to be connected to banks, it's going to be connected to other critical social service delivery institutions so that we are speaking the same language. Uh, as of now, this year is an inception year for the Secretariat. Therefore, whilst we are, we, are, we are building up the systems, we can't wait until we have everything in place and start saying, let's, let's recover the money. What we are saying now is that we have data for example, from 2200, that's the year 2000, to 2012, we have data available with us. Um, so any student that went into the public universities between 2000 and 2012 can easily make a call 
we have the phone numbers that we listed on that uh, advert and that press statement. We have a website, not the website of course, but a Facebook page. And uh, we have also phone numbers that we have indicated. We have email addresses that we have indicated that they can call. What, what is going to happen is, since we're supposed to link these two, uh, the IT system which is being developed, but as of now, one can make a call or can send in an email and within 20 minutes is going to be given an update. What we are doing actually to those that are living in Malawi is that we are visiting the employers and we are talking to the human resource managers uh, in the space of two weeks. Well, that's what we think we are going to accomplish in the bigger institutions. Right. Uh, that that, that, that they, they, they should provide to us the names and then we're going to the database because we can't just release the data uh, when we know that at different stages, government tried to put in initiatives for recovery. And, and you never know, somebody might have repaid, and then you discover that in that data, it shows he didn't pay. So to avoid such type of contradictions as if we question the integrity of our information and data, we are appealing now, that's what we're doing, that people should make inquiries. They can make phone calls and we'll tell them the status of their loan. They right. are, uh, uh, so, so before you continue, uh, you remind me, there is a case of one former student and he was writing on his Facebook page. Yes. He said he repaid his loan through yes. um, M MSB yes. uh, in 2009. Of yes. course, he had to jungle. He had to go yes. from this office to that yes. office until yes. he paid it, yes. 60000 in total, yes. um, in 2009. But the question is, where is his money right now? Would the records show? that he paid in 2009. Exactly. The Malawi Savings Bank account that was being held by Malawi Savings Bank proper is now an account for the Higher Education Students Loan Board. And it's an account that has been reconciled. It's an account that has all the details of those that deposited in their monies. So it means their names, if they check, their name will show the status that this they paid because the systems have been inherited. Nothing has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. We are even keeping the hard copy files uh, in case the, the, the software doesn't help us much. The hard copy files are there that we can make reference to. But we're trying to automate everything. In actual fact, I would say here, for the sake of the public, that we have a World Bank funded project to, to automate the whole system. And, and, and we're just in the final phases of finding an international consultant, a consulting firm that is going to build up this whole robust, purchase the equipment, develop the, the system that will be able to provide information. Mm -hmm. Very soon, students all over the world will be, former students all over the world will be able to log in, check the status of their loan, they can pay online, they can choose to pay via bank, they can choose to pay via a visa card. That's, that's actually the, one of the concerns that Deborah had, and uh, of course I can imagine yes. other people living abroad. Exactly. So exactly. In the, but in the meantime, how, how does one pay? Should they wait in, until in the, in, the, in the meantime, they uh, can only pay via the accounts we have opened with Malawi Savings Bank, and the details are there mm -hmm. we, in, in the statements that we issued, and, 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 and the National Bank. We use these two banks because they have wider national structure. Uh, some are going to pay through their employers because if, if, for example, let's say, let's look at an institution like Malawi Revenue Authority, which is a very big employer, uh, we won't be talking to each individual who owns us alone, uh, but we will talk to the Human Resource Department and they will, might be deducting them at source. The loans vary. As we go very, very back into the remote past, you discover that the loans are 260 kwacha, 300 kwacha. While it starts going to 2002, then going to 30,000, then 200,000, 300,000. It means uh, we, we have to be making bilateral agreements. Some have already actually started paying. The good news, I will tell you, some who might have owned the government in 2060 kwacha are paying 50,000 kwacha uh, because they're saying the value of this money. Because the period we are making this appeal from April of this year to March 2017 is a grace period where we are not going to charge interest. But the act empowers us to determine an interest rate for the loan. Right. That was the discussion, actually, one of the discussions on, 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 on Facebook or social media. Yes. Uh, that, for example, someone was saying, I got 1,100 something yes. in 1990. 90 something that's right uh, and and now i have to repay that much uh, i mean that that amount mm -hmm. it won't make sense mm -hmm. why can't the board have an interest to this money we do we do acknowledge that it is important that they should have an interest but remember that going through different phases 
the way the loan, student loan scheme was designed. If we quickly bring in the issue of, of, uh, of the, the interest rate, uh, the compliance rate will go down. Right. right now, as, that's why you are surprised that we're using the word an appeal. The reason is, Malawi, if I give an example of Malawi and commercial banks, they put tough measures to make sure that somebody accesses a loan because the rate of defaulting is very high. Now, we, we are concerned that the recovery process is not only an end in itself. It's because we have increased the number of needy deserving students that we should support. You need to know that in 2015, 2016, we had over 10,000 applicants, needy students. But out of them, when we screened them, 7,000 something were deserving. But we only managed to give 4,600 something students because of the limitations of the resource envelope. So as such, our campaign for recovery as of now is just to ensure that we recover these monies. People would quickly come in and give us back those resources. And then we increase the threshold so that in 2016-17, what we must ask from government, if it is granted, it is topped up with that recovered money so that we, we reach out to more needy students. Right. So uh, media reports indicate that um, as of now, uh, 1.7 billion is what former... Um, students or government yes and, and and I'm wondering how much of a change would this money bring in terms of assisting more needed students uh, who are currently studying with the University of Malawi in 2015-16 uh, government gave us 1.5 billion and we used 83 percent of that to assist 4,600 something students now that, 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 that's that's 1.255 billion now, if you get, let's say, for the sake of arguing, the 1.7 billion, definitely we're going to get another 4,000 students that are going to be assisted. There are actually some cases where we have not given 100% the loan when, when that situation needed 100% financing for the student to, to continue with his or her education. We, we do believe it will make a real difference. The stories there that we get at our office when students come, uh, there are sorry stories that you see a student capable, deserving, but the family cannot afford to support such type of a student. And I think that's why psychologically we're using the word appeal in our statements because we think Malawians are one are responsible and, and then they should be encouraged to pay. Anyway, we're just maintaining the principle. You got a loan, a loan you must pay back the loan. However, if we start threatening, we also read the feedback from the social media. We know very well that Others would think, okay, this money won't be taken care of, it's going to be misused. But we are an established structure. We are a legally established entity. It's a statutory corporation. And, and we are existing. Our premises are in Area 10, uh, off from Ponongo Street, where people can visit us. Our bank details are going to be audited. We are going to be presenting reports to the parent ministry, Minister of Education. We are going to present reports to, 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 to Parliament. As such, Parliament we cannot approve a subsequent budget that we are proposing, if we haven't been audited and we haven't proven that the resources were used inclusively and equitably across the nation. I, I, I do hope that um, uh, this will indeed uh, uh, be as, as you're promising, because I mean, this is coming at a time when uh, there's been a lot of concerns in government of uh, misuse of public resources. And there you are as a board appealing to people to give back the money uh, at the same time amid concerns of uh, use of public resources. Exactly. Well, one thing that Malayans should be assured of is that this is a new entity. It has a board that is robust with the different experts of different professions, lawyers, uh, auditors, a mixed bag, academicians, it's a mixed bag of board members. And the secretariat is also composed of different people with the different backgrounds. And then we have the the, the act in place that is regulating our operations. The misuse of these resources cannot arise. For example, I've just given you this example that those that paid uh, five years ago through Malawi Savings Bank, when Malawi Savings Bank was mandated by government to, re to be collecting these, the, these loans back from former students, the monies are still there. They have not been used. We have officially written to Malawi Savings Bank, we have inherited those accounts, they are in our name. If somebody would wish to find out, we would be able to provide that feedback to say, you, 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 got, you paid this money, you got this receipt, the money is still there in this account. Mm -hmm. But you should understand, as I'm using the word, an inception phase, 
as a very critical stage where we are defining systems and procedures that would help us to effectively deliver our mandate and at the same time to be responsive to the needs and the demands of the students outside there. I want to, I want to read to you uh, one comment which I got on Facebook. I think we need serious thought, especially on establishing a separate entity just to give loans or, or recover loans. Believe you me, we will be spending 500 million kwash a year to run an institution that is dispersing 1.5 billion kwash in a year, which should also be difficult to collect. So the question is the balance in, in, in terms of the money we're spending to just collect or disperse this particular money. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very good observation. But honestly speaking, you, you, you need to know that you, for you to embark on everything, a good number of institutions in the corporate world would depend on advertising and advertising is costly but they know the consequences of advertising and the consequences of not advertising i think if we can have no institution in place to run or manage the affairs of loan displacement and loan recovery we're going back into the very same old system and those that are saying i've been willing to pay back their argument will be defeated that, that that we will continue into the very same structure as a society where, where somebody gets public resources and then they don't pay back. In, 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 our, in some of our advanced neighboring countries, they have the very robust systems where these have turned into revolving funds that they have slowly lessened their dependency on government resources because those funds are invested in two different systems. You need to remember also that much of our public universities are like an acute shortage of hostels. It will mean an institution like us can finance construction of hostels in some university campuses and in turn when you're giving out loans for upkeep that loan is just revolving around and then we increase the threshold of the number of students that should be supported among many other strategies that we are trying to put in place to to support the needed students so it, it, it won't make any sense i have made a reference to the reform agenda of government that it is looking at public university financing from a different perspective. You, you need to come also into another background perspective where a lot of Malawian citizens or students believe university education is supposed to be free. Some of the students you, you have seen on social media commenting saying, no, some of us who got those loans, not necessarily that we need, deserved them. Right. But because they are, they, now there are no policies and procedures put in place properly, the screening processes, then everybody, every human jack could get the loan. But today we are saying that won't happen. Anybody who submits a form with false information and we realize it's false after verification, we can take some legal measures against that individual because we won't need the undeserving students, because we have needed and deserving students in this country. Right. So they shouldn't be denied access to higher education simply because some people have opted to be greedy. Now talk to me about screening of these students. Um, just this year, or end of last year, there were concerns in the University of Malawi that some of the students that benefited were not needy as such. And I do know that there have been students, poor students in the University of Malawi who have actually withdrawn because they can't afford to pay. Talk to me about screening. Exactly. I think we, we need to appreciate several layers and levels of, uh, of, of, of doing things. One, uh, the secretariat for this board has just been put in place November end. Before that, there was an interim secretariat that did its best to make sure that this job is done. It had to deal with the pressure of time. It had to deal with the engaging universities. For the first time, we have an institution independent from the universities, but is dealing with the students. It meant it had to depend on the university administrators. So once the screening process was completed, depending on the forms and the information provided on the forms, the university administrators were supposed to provide feedback. Some of the administrators did not necessarily do their job thoroughly because they would have easily detected that. And in view of that, that's why some few cases it's not many cases crept in. But realizing that the board now, this time around, has moved beyond at developing more additional strategies that once we have done the initial screening, we go back to each college. Mm -hmm. So we meet the dean of student, we meet several administrators, we go name by name. And we call so the parents. Because the form now is more detailed. So that we get even details of the guardians. If the guardians are providing false information, we discover the neediness of this student at the college level. That is before we submit these names to the board for approval.
In so doing, we believe that we will be able to be at 98%. We shouldn't say 100%. We are dealing with human beings who can falsify information. And we cannot act like ghosts that we claim we will be able to detect that. But the form has been reorganized in the sense that it will be able to provide information that will be detected. <clears throat> in the future, we will be applying online. And therefore, there will be some measures as well that we are going to use. But as I've said, we had an inception phase. That's the first thing to recognize. We are trying all that we are trying to do to make sure that we directly get the needed students. But One but critical thing I want to highlight as well is that from this year, we will be going back to Sondersos for Form 3 and Form 4 students, identify the needed students from there. Not that we'll go and ask, are you needed? But the school knows already who is needed because the schools are at different grades and different qualities, private and public schools. That data is going to be captured into our system. When they are now selected, and the, the National Council for Education has released the names of students selected into pri pri public universities, we are going to run the data into our systems. As they are applying, we know already who was already needed in the center school and has gone through into the university. And then it means his or her application form will definitely be considered for support. Mm -hmm. In any case, we need also to acknowledge that the word needy is, is a Yeah, I wanted name. to ask that. Uh, how, how do you define who is needy? In, in this case, the word needy shall mean somebody who has no capacity on his or her own to pay for the fees of or to stay on campuses to, to attain higher education. And by extension, it means there's no guardians, whether a brother or sister, mother or father, uncle or whatsoever, who can help this person to, 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 to access necessary resources that would make that person go attain higher education. But then you need to, to, to realize that if a student is filling a form, and, and you've been in, in the university before, there will be some students who would want to falsify information. And as they falsify information, they would even choose to falsify who are their reference groups. Mm -hmm. you know, but we, we, we have tried, just after releasing the first list, we have picked quite a lot of issues and we've gotten quite a lot of feedback that we have used to organize ourselves, organize the forms and, and, and the collaboration with the university administrators so that uh, we get needy and deserving students. Remember, we are also going to private universities, and, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes people will assume uh, students apply to private universities because they already have the money. But uh, the absorption rate of, of university, public universities is not 100%. So some students will apply to private universities because they haven't been taken in public universities. And sometimes what happens is that the, those that are coming from very poor background and from community centers the rural areas are the ones that will not get very good points to be taken into the public universities. So they find themselves getting applying into the private universities. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the, the act mandates us to support both. So uh, for those students that have not been able to access, to access the loans this year, but are quite deserving, some of them who have withdrawn, will they be given special attention uh, next definitely, time? Definitely, definitely. They'll be given special attention. And what we have done again is, if from we have a calendar of events clearly defined. For example, this April we are going to s distribute the loan application forms, not only in universities and colleges, but even in the district education manager offices. After that, we're giving them a month. It's two months that they, they're going to do the application and whatsoever they're going to do. They submit them to the board and the secretariat is going to start the screening process. It's a quite long, cumbersome process to do the data entry and then start screening. But then we will have already identified certain lists that have already been established that when we are doing the screening, we already know that these were left out. For example, I have already told you that there are some students who have been given loans this year. But their loans were not adequate. We haven't given anybody 100% because of the resource envelope. So definitely, such type of students with such type of cases would be considered as a, as a, as a priority. That is why we have also uh, uh, made sure that the, the, the application process becomes more winding than a straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we, without making it so, every human jug will wake up and think they can apply for the loan. So now um, I can imagine that uh, tracing uh, former students, male former students, would be much easier than tracing female uh, former students who changed names yes. after getting married yes, and all that's that. Right, that's um, right. uh, for instance, myself. Yes. Um, in college, I was just Chirwa. Yes. And then now, 
Uh, sometimes I'll put Chiru and Danga, yes, but yes. I can choose to also just drop my Chiru and just yes, say, I'm um, yes. Teresa and Danga. Yes. How, how do you trace us? Simple. What we are doing now is that other than writing all those press statements and, and uh, having the media, uh, electronic media adverts, we are meeting the human resource managers of different institutions. Uh, we are going to meet different associations of professionals, but we are going to present these messages to them. For example, we have already gone to over 20 companies, institutions in Lidogwe, just in the past three days, where we, 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 we have agreed and collaborated on how best they can give us the data of their employees that pass through the University of Malawi, or the public universities here in Malawi at that particular point in time, so that we identify. So we are saying, Definitely, as you are, you are filling your form, your personal file form, you, you, you had your maiden name listed there. So we need that. They were not going to tell us that there's Teresa and Danga the Zodiac. We, we might get Teresa Chiro. And, and, and if, because they might not have required your uh, academic registration uh, you know, number, we, we, we have the number in, in our database. It mean, as we're running into the system, we'll be able to identify that. So how we, we would trust married uh, women is, is, is that we are asking for their married names from their employers. Mm -hmm. The act actually goes beyond just looking at that from a simple perspective because if an employer does not disclose that in his institution he or she has officers who benefited from the student loan scheme, there is a penalty for the employer. So definitely the employers, uh, luck enough I would be honest with you, we are encouraged that 100% the employers we have met from the past three days have been very positive. Yesterday we just went to one institution, I won't mention, where they immediately had given us the list of their, <laughs> their employees who went through the university. So the collaboration is very high. Actually, the doubts that are raised more on social media and what we are facing in reality are totally mm. different. Now, as you conclude, um, um, what would you say has been the response uh, in terms of students themselves reaching out to the board I want to pay my loan. It's excellent. We, the adverts have been running for one and a half weeks, and uh, we have over 200 requests via email. I, I, can't, I can't count the phone calls that we're getting, but via email, because I'm able to be linked up to the email, I'm checking what is going on. Over 200 emails so far have come by yesterday, I'm not talking of today, uh, directly from the former students asking. Those that are making phone calls are also many. The response actually is overwhelming. We didn't imagine that that, that that would be the case. Knowing we are new, people don't understand us still. They think we are National Council for Education when we are a totally different entity altogether. So our, our quickly coming into the media and uh, talking to different stakeholders is assisting quite a lot that to raise awareness that we are existing. And we have a legal mandate, a legal backing, and we are a well-established structure with systems in place. And that, that, that they, have, they should have the confidence to come and ask and they're going to be given information. What I will ask today is that they shouldn't think if they send an email, immediately they're going to get an answer in, in a minute. Because you're dealing with a very back information, it's back information. So to mean somebody has to log in and check that information and make sure that it is verified, it's correct information. To make sure that our information is secured and we maintain its integrity so that we don't give somebody false information who paid already the loan and we're saying no you owe us some money or somebody who has never paid the loan we say no you don't have any loan with us no but we are working tirelessly to make sure that the systems are in place and i know the with the world bank supported program within four months we have a very robust effective system in place you need to know the background that a lot of stakeholders from the universities and from the Ministry of Education had visited different countries to see how this scheme operates. And we're using quite a lot of those principles. And we'll keep on learning to make sure that uh, we have the systems, the structures, and we're also accountable, transparent, and responsive to the needs of the students. Sony, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.